I'm Brian Langsbart. I've been uh, working in film and TV music for almost 14 years now. Um, currently in Los Angeles, California, and happy to be part of his Ask the Experts uh, video program. So uh, what original music can, can bring to a movie is, um, is, is, you know, certainly within the question you have the answer. It's, it's, it's original, which lends so much to any production. Um, certainly to your peers as filmmakers, uh, I think I think every filmmaker I've talked to who hasn't had the chance to use a composer is always um, extremely interested to work with a composer. And generally it's a, a time or budget consideration that they can't, but they're so interested in that collaborative process. And that is probably the first benefit of your... Um, uh, you know, of working with original music, working with a composer, is you're going to have a collaboration. And, you know, you're going to work with someone who's going to see your movie while it's in post-production, but before it reaches your audience. And, and they're going to be able to give you a take on it and then put music to it in such a way that, that gives you an opportunity to, to actually work with them. So collaboration is, is key. Working with a, a composer is not like working with a music library or licensing a song. They might not do what you want the first time, so you have an opportunity to meet with them, talk about the music, and sculpt it to your vision as a filmmaker um, to ultimately get an original product that you as the filmmaker will be able to say, hey, you know, I, I, I worked with a composer on this, I'm... I'm a part of it, you know, it's, he's, he or she, the, the composer, is like an actor in your movie, and, and you, you will get to direct them, and the more experience you have doing that, the, the better your communication flow will, will go with the composer, and ultimately yield a, a really cool project, an original product, where people will come out of seeing your movie, and they'll be able to comment on the music. If they've heard the music before on the radio, or wherever, they're probably not going to say, wow, I love the music in that movie. But if they never heard it before and they liked it, they're going to comment on that. That's going to be positive buzz for, for your film. Well, it, it really seems like with, with all of the student film music programs out there, it's, it, it's hard to not find a, a, a film composer, a, a young film composer. But... Um, definitely you've got a lot of resources on the internet um, that are just simple industry groups and and um, activity groups related to, to film music and you could probably just do a search I, I would advise against the posting it out on Craigslist um, I think it's a, a probably gonna wind up being a, a big waste of your time and and you might as well at least put the word out to your Facebook network, hey, I'm looking for, you know, a good film composer. Does anyone know someone? Um, chances are they do. Um, if you are on the East Coast, um, Berkeley College of Music would be an excellent resource. And if you are on the West Coast, USC uh, would and UCLA would probably be excellent resources for finding um, student composers. Uh, for for student projects. The workflow of working with a composer is um, up until up until the point that the composer actually has, let's say, a, 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 a close to final or fine cut of your movie. Um, it can be really different because it, a lot of filmmakers have already established their relationships with their particular composer. So they might, you know, tell them about an idea they have long before they've even shot the first frame of film. But let's let's skip that all that process and just go straight to okay, I've edited my movie and I'm ready to give it to my composer. You know what what do I expect? And basically, it's it should be um, a, a pretty simple back and forth process of once you've edited your film, have a QuickTime copy of it with separated audio so that you have your 
production audio on, let's say, just the left channel. And then if you use some temp score, some background music that you've slugged into your movie just to just to set the mood, just something to use as a roadmap for your composer, put that on a separate channel, on the right channel, for example, so that your composer can mute that channel and work with just the production audio and and then have something that they can return to you with their music. And and that'll start, you know, the back and forth process. And then um, when you get the piece of music from the composer, you might want to re-edit from there and and slowly as you re-edit and as the composer rewrites, you you find this happy medium in the middle, which which should be your final product. And that hasn't always been the case, but with with editing being so easy to do on computers now, it's it seems that while a composer is composing, the picture editor is still editing and and there's it's there's such quick communication and the product can flow back and forth over the internet so quickly that um, the, the workflow is such that y you can almost do it at the same time. And as frustrating as that can sometimes be, sometimes be for both parties, it, it seems to be the norm uh, for most production now. There's always going to be a composer out there who's who's excited to work on your project because there just simply are, you know, more composers out there than there are projects to work on. Um, I think the most important thing would would be to at least have something in your budget for a composer um it it can be very uh demoralizing to find yourself working on a project for absolutely nothing what what you can do though is 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 find that even the smallest budget um can can really inspire a composer and chances are if it's if it's really small where let's let's say like a under one thousand dollar budget a composer can then, you know, say, okay, look, this is not worth it, you know, for me to just try to pocket everything here. Let's let's try to get some live musicians on the gig. And it's, if it's a short film, it's just not going to cost that much money for the composer to probably bring in a friend of theirs who plays violin or cello. And ultimately, the filmmaker is going to get so much more out of that music budget as well and not just feel like, oh, I'm just paying a composer to write some music. It's like, no, you're, you're establishing a much higher level uh, production value for your film, uh, even if you can just get one live musician on a project. One of the, uh, one of the terms given to, to the current, you know, up and coming generations, we, we call this the, the instant gratification generation and, and technology has a lot to do with that. And personally, I'm finding in, in my business that, um, producers and, and some directors are, are so interested in in this instant gratification that the collaboration process is getting left behind. Now if you're if you have a, a 30 second commercial that you're producing and you have 50 pieces of music that have been submitted and you're looking for the right one to fit, you know, it's it's just this quick like, okay, nope, throw it out, nope, throw it out, nope, throw it out. Don't don't put your composer in that same uh, boat because your composer is someone you can listen to something and go, wait, that's that's close. That's kind of the right vibe, but I'm looking for it to do this. I'm looking for it to go in this direction. I want this instrument, you know. And and your composer can work with you on that, and and you can create a product that that's going to have your original stamp of creativity on it. Um, so that's just my only uh, my only advice is is to is to collaborate, work with the composer. Don't put them in the same boat as just this uh, you know digital product. That if it's not right for you, okay, you know, move on to the next to the next thing. I, that's that's never been the way the process was supposed to be. Mm -hmm.